In today's video, we have a hand featuring one of my favorite poker video bloggers, a lot of your favorite poker video bloggers, Brad Owen. He is playing 5, 10, 25, no limit Texas variety, about 200 big blinds deep. They are playing at Beauvage, which, interestingly enough, is one of the first casinos I ever played at. Long time ago. Let's get to the hand. Next, it's our turn for Ace Queen. We're under the gun plus one. I raised the 60. Quite a few interested customers. The button calls, who was the opponent in the last hand, he's out for revenge. The big blind calls, and the under the gun straddler calls as well. We're going four ways to the flop. It comes queen three deuce rainbow. We've got top top and a backdoor straight draw. Still, there are lots of other players in the hand. It checks to us. We're going to be firing for value and to clear out the field. I bet 140. So right here, the pot's 245. And Brad decides to go for a chunky bet, 140. Look, in GTO world, which I know is not where we are playing at Beau Rivage, this is a spot where you actually wanna check with your entire range. I know that may sound crazy, but that is what you should do in GTO world. That said, we're nowhere near GTO world, and I think a lot of players are gonna call any normal-ish bet far too often in this situation with hands like under pairs or a queen with a bad kicker if it goes bet and call or bet and raise. So if your opponent's gonna splash around far too wide, not recognizing that Brad's another thing on betting range to just be super duper strong, especially when he goes kind of big, then betting big is good because your opponents are not going to uh, respond adequately. I think if you are gonna bet, you probably wanna go just a little bit smaller in this spot. Pot is 245, maybe when you go 140, you get pocket sixes to fold, but maybe your opponents just aren't gonna fold for any bet. And if that's the case, then might as well bet bigger. They wanna get on the blog after all. They get two for one this time. Maybe we'll win right now, or maybe we'll get one caller. I don't anticipate much more action than that. I'm very wrong. No one folds. The three opponents all call. I'm not even sure what to put everyone on. I imagine one player has a queen, and the rest either have straight draws or slow playing stats. All right, all right. <laughs> we bet button calls, big blind calls, and under the gun calls. A kind of big bet. So look, uh, Brad says he thinks one of the players has a queen. I think that's certainly reasonable if... I was the second player yet to act, and I had any queen. I'm just not going to fold. The third and the fourth player, though, what should they have? Well, I just said, if it goes big bet and call, like queen 10 should just fold. So straight draws? I mean, what straight draws even exist? Notice we have the ace in our hand, so we block ace 5 and ace 4. Are they really calling 5-4 preflop? Maybe they would call 5-4 preflop. Would they call a big bet on the flop with 6-5 for a gut shot? Maybe, but probably not. So, like, it's kind of hard to put the players on logical hands, which makes Brad's flop big bet very, very good, because obviously they're calling with more than only super premium hands. Uh, next question comes, would they slow play sets here? I mean, they probably should, but I think a lot of players in most games just raise immediately because they don't want to get outdrawn and they just want to load the money in the pot right now if Brad happens to have aces or ace queen. So I wouldn't expect to be against sets too often, but... At the same time, it is kind of hard to put people on logical hands, which means they probably just have hands that are not that logical, like backdoor flush draws and pocket eights. The turn is another deuce, which I'm glad to see because it reduces the amount of set combos that we could have been up against, and there shouldn't be many deuces in my opponent's range, if any. It checks to me. I check for pot control purposes and to see how players will proceed going forward. Okay, two of spades on the turn. So some backdoor flush draws now exist. Brad says the two is not very likely, and if you think about it, that should be true if the opponents are reasonable before the flop. Remember, Brad did only make it 60 pre-flop, and it was 5, 10, 25. That was a straddle to 25, I believe. So would the big blind call with like any two or any suited two? Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. Notice uh, Brad has the ace of hearts in his hand, and the diamond and the spade is on the board. So that means there's only one combination of ace two suited that the other two callers could logically have. So there's really like basically no combinations of ace two suited. Um, the problem though is that the big blind I think might call with seven two off suit because they're in the straddle closing the action. So you do have to be a little bit careful against particularly the big blind in this spot. And Brad says he checks for pot control and to see what happens, but I don't think you should expect the button to bet this turn all that often. Because if the button is sitting here with a random queen, I don't think they want to bet and then get called or raised by anyone. And if everyone folds, they're usually folding out hands that are drawing very thin. And if they don't have a queen, then they're almost certainly not gonna bet, like with pocket eights or something. 
So I think Brad just wants to bet. At this point, his hand's almost always good, and it got a little bit more vulnerable to being outdrawn by backdoor spade draws. So I think Brad wants to keep betting this turn and just get money in the pot. The button check's back. I'm no longer concerned. He's going to have us beat. If nothing changes on the river, I'll only have to be worried about the big blind and the under-the-gun straddler. The dealer puts out the four of clubs. Pocket fours make a boat. Six five and ace five also get there. The big blind bets 225. Notably, not the straddle. I think I maybe had these slightly confused in my head. In this spot, normally the big blind's a player you have to worry about having the two, but when there's a straddle, you don't have to worry about the big blind having a two nearly as often. You have to worry about the straddler having the two because the big blind's not going to put in $50 more with 7-2 offsuit, presumably, right? Also, the big blind did not indicate they came to gamble by straddling. So in this spot, the big blind actually has a pretty, or should have a pretty decent range, whereas the straddler is the one who should have the insane range. Hopefully that was clear. Anyway, 225 bet from the big blind, not the straddle. Tiny sizing that I take at face value. It looks like he has a medium strength hand like a bad queen and is trying to get the showdown as cheaply as possible. All right, so the opponent bets 225 into the $805 pot. What I want you to do is ask yourself what you would do with this ace queen after the straddler folds. Do you find a fold? Do you call? Do you raise to $600? Or you raise to $1,800. Take a second, think about it, and write what you would do in the comment section below. Under the gun folds, we won't be folding. We didn't put in the raise on the river in the previous hand that we went over, but we're putting one in here. I make it 600 to go. All right, 225, Brad makes it 600. About 2.7, 2.8 times the opponent's bet. And... This is a spot where you have to ask, how much will my opponent call with their marginal value hands? What is a marginal value hand here? Well, obviously a queen. So how much will your opponent call with a queen? And I don't know. I would love to be able to get a little bit more money in the pot, like 800. But thinking it through, given a lot of people are kind of weak on the river, especially if you do put in a, call it a big raise, I think Brad's size is pretty nice. Because I think a lot of people with a queen are just going to call. And I think the big blind's going to have a queen a large chunk of the time. It is for pure value to get a hand like king queen or queen jack to call. The button folds, the action's on the big blind, he's got our number, it's 600, but he's not gonna call us maybe. He re raises to 1600. Oh my god. What on earth is going <laughs> on here? They say if you get check raised on the river, you should almost always fold because you're pretty much just gonna be up against the nuts. If you get three bet on the river, it's even more likely. I'm replaying the hand in my mind. I was so sure that the small river bet was a blocker. Now I'm wondering if he was trying to induce a raise with a hand like quad deuces or three or four is full. I don't think that we'd get re-raised by a straight. So I'm ruling that hand out. Pause, pause, one second. So when people bet small on the river, if they're trying to play anywhere near GTO, which again, they're not necessarily playing GTO, they ought to be betting small with a lot of thin value hands like a queen, but then also some super nuts like full houses. And then also some bluffs, some rare sporadic bluffs. So will the opponent bet small on the river with a full house? Some people literally never do that. A lot of people literally never do that because they want to get a lot of money in the pot. And when they bet 200 or 225, that's just not a lot of money. They're losing a lot of value. But if they are trying to protect their ranges at all, they want to make sure they have some super nut hands in their small betting range and their big betting range and also their checking range so that they can put in a raise when they feel inclined and also to induce players like Brad to not raise all that often, which is far better for your marginal thin value hands. Especially because we have removal to ace five. The opponent will never have queens full and actually should be concerned that we could have that hand because occasionally I might check turn with pocket queens, figuring that we'd be up against a lot of straight draws that wouldn't be able to call a turn bet, but Maple Left River if they don't get there. I'm confused but I go with my initial read that the opponent bet small with a medium strength hand and may now be attempting some kind of Hail Mary bluff. Ooh, that's, that's a bit of a, a leap in logic, I think, where I think they're betting small for thin value. They got raised, and now they're going to decide to take that thin value hand, like a queen, and then re-raise it big. This is a weird spot. I definitely agree. I would probably have... Found the call too. I would have hated to find the call here, but look, pot odds exist. It's a thousand to try to win, what, 4,000? Are we good 25% of the time? 
And look, I don't know. I'm sure some of you in the comment section below right now are typing, idiot call, idiot call. Brad always calls. He's such a calling station. And yeah, of course, Brad's a calling station. We all know that. But this is a weird one. This is a weird one. I think this call becomes probably worse against decent players. The thing is, like, decent players shouldn't call the preflop raise from the big blind with very many twos, right? I think this bluff would work a whole lot better if the big blind was a big blind with no straddle, or if this was coming from the straddler, because then they can actually reasonably represent a whole lot of twos. But here, the opponents really call it logically representing only a few full houses, right? So if they only have a few full houses, are they going to run these Hail Mary bluffs? And I don't know. I don't know. Pot odds, though. An ace queen. I call for a thousand more. We hear one of my favorite things. Nice. Queen 10! Savage bluff from the opponent. I think if they're going to bluff here, they probably want to rip it all in for a lot. Small bet for thin value. You get raised. You want to block Brad's calling hands. What are Brad's logical calling hands? Well, pocket queens, obviously. And then ace queen, pocket aces, pocket kings. So I think right here, a hand like queen 10 would be a pretty nice all in. I think this player probably messed up by going too small. I give them full credit for attempting this savage bluff, but I think the only way this is going to succeed to get Brad to fold out a hand like aces or ace queen is to rip it all in his face for like $5,000. Can't go for these small raises. Calling station Brad's gonna call every time. The opponent turned Queen 10 offsuit into an odd bluff and takes himself straight to value town. Our assessment of the situation is correct. The big blind bet small in the river to get to showdown cheaply. Then for some reason, decided to charge himself the maximum to get to showdown. We win a big pot, even for the stakes we're playing tonight. Our stack climbs almost 8,000. Nice hand for Brad. He scoops a loop. Scoops a loop. He scoop a loops a nice pot by making a savage hero call on the river. Good job. Good work. Brad gets it done. That's me for today. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button down below. Huge thanks to Brad for letting us use his footage here. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And when you get three bet on the river and you decide to call, I hope somehow your opponents are bluffing.